So we've built our main models, our little girl, Boo, and we've built the snail. Like I said before, the scenery, we'll probably just skip over that because it's all just basic geometry. And we're going to be reusing the shells that we've created for the snail as well. Um, and building things like leaves and blades of grass and things aren't very difficult. So uh, rather than bog you down with be building every little detail, I think we'll uh, leave those bits to you. And it'll, it might be fun for you to play around with the, with the geometry and come up with your own twist on it. So we've got the characters, like I said. And we need to start thinking about how we're going to render these. Now, at the moment, they have basic shaders applied. And these could render out perfectly fine if you're wanting a very simple image, you know, very subtle sort of shades, etc., on a skin, on a hair, and on a dress. Uh, but what I'm going to do is add a bit more detail into some of, her, some of the elements of her, uh, just to make the whole illustration a bit more interesting. Now the skin I'm going to leave as it is and we will get a lot of the details through that via the shader. We want it to be quite simple anyway because the illustration needs to have that sort of childlike innocence. The eyes I'll leave as they are as well. As you can see if I move this around I've applied a very basic reflection map to them just to give them a bit more of uh, a bit more interest really. What we're going to do is we're going to add texture to the dress and to her hair. Now her hair is mainly to add in a bit more detail, a bit more hair, uh, well just so you can see the strands of hair etc on each section. And for a dress this is just so we can add patterns, um, fabric detail, uh, whatever you want really onto the dress. Again just to make the whole thing a bit more interesting. Now I'm using Maya but I'm going to try and gloss over and not get bogged down too much in the various tools that I'll be using and I'll try and give more of a general overview uh, of what we're doing just so that we can you can apply this to different applications. So what we need to do first is see what the UVs look like on her dress as they are. Now I've already got a texture set up, a checker map texture as you can see and this just tells us that you the UVs are rubbish and they are set so that every quad it, uh, fills the UV page. So we need to address that now. Although that looks like quite a detailed dress if we leave it like that, like a patchwork. Anyway, so to start us off we need a set of UVs and I'm just going to plane our map from the front straight through. And that gives us the UVs to start with. I show you the UV editor. There we go. But that, as we can see, is overlapping the UVs on the front and the back, and the back ones are inverted. So let's fix that now. What we need to do now is just separate the front and the back, but not in the actual model, only the UV shell. So all I'm doing here, selecting the edges where I want to create seams, where I want the UV shell to be separated. Just go to Polygon, Cut UVs, and you see those open up there. Now we just want to move the front and the back. We'll just see what I've got selected there. I've got the front. Just move the front out, just so we can see them both. Now the back will be inverted. So what I can do is just do a just an unfold horizontally, and that will flip the back for us like so, and it unfolds the dress a little bit more. So if you look at the UVs now, the back's the right way around, the front's okay, and the side, we haven't got that stretching, but we've still got a seam down here. Now this character in this scene will be viewed from this angle, so it makes sense for us to hide the seam down this side here. So we'll keep the seam here, but we'll join up the UVs here because this will be seen when we come to render. So what we could do is join the seam there to there. But first we're going to play around with the UVs a bit to get a bit of a better shape. And at the moment, although these look quite good, they're not going to be very good to paint upon. Say we wanted to draw a line along the bottom if this was a stripy dress 
we're going to have to draw the line in waves rather than a straight line. So we need to just adjust that first to make it a bit easier to paint upon. So what we're going to do is just flatten these UV lines here, these edges, and that will mean that we can just paint a line there and in here, as we can see from this grid, we'll get a nice curve. So that just makes it easier for us when we come to paint the texture. We can take that a step further and also align them vertically as well, like so. And again, that will just make them a lot easier to paint on. And when we come in to join in these seams here, they'll just snap together. Like that there and there, these edges, we can just uh, sew those together without any issues. So we can continue on like that, aligning these edges, and then we'll sew these edges in the middle. And what we should end up with, I'll just deselect this, what we should end up with is something like this. As you can see, I've put it into the grid square. All these lines are nicely aligned, which makes it easier to paint upon. And I've tried to keep the collar straight as well, because obviously if we paint a texture onto here, it needs to go straight over the collar too. So they're the UVs for the dress. Now let's have a quick look at the hair. The hair again, I'm just going to briefly gloss over this. The hair is a very basic shape. If I just pull that out for a second. As we can see, when we created it, it was just a cube which we extruded and adjusted. So the UVs for that, again, just use basic projections. and It's basic box uh, mapping, really. I mean, this is the UVs at the moment. But using basic projections, we can just end up with something like this. Now I think this is more than one hair strand. If I just pull one out for now so we can see. So that's just one lot of the hair. Um, it's currently smooth using smooth mesh. If I press one, that gives you a better idea of how it looks. See, we've just got front, back, bottom, side in nice lines, easy to work with easy to paint on and the texture itself can just be uh, repeated as well. The bottom and the top you don't really see those so I've hidden them as flat lines here. Just undo that and at the bottom because we may use an alpha channel at the bottom of the hair just to use a transparency map, just to give it a bit more of a hair feel and to enhance those individual strands, which we add, we'll add in via the texture. So let's just uh, switch models and we'll have a look at the textured version. Just like that. So as you can see, we've added a dress and we've added these individual strands into her hair. Now the hair itself is just quite a basic texture and what I've done with the dress, if I bring up the texture page, as you can see, it's very. we've been able to use those lines to make it easier for us to create these details here and the, using the UV as a uh, UV snapshot uh, of the UV page, we've managed to be able to create these details too and from that We've also created a normal map, which is going to bring those details out of the uh, out of the dress. And I've also created a specular map, and that is a diffuse map with a bit of noise added in Photoshop or whatever application you want to use. And that'll just make these sort of sparkle slightly in the scene as we put this into uh, the specular color channel. If I zoom in, we'll see if we can see them sparkling. As you can see, we get a very little sparkle there as the light passes over it. It just makes it more of a girly, glittery dress. But now we have the UVs for the dress. What I've also done is added just a, a transparency layer at the top uh, for this lace part here. 
But this may not be the final dress we go with. Once we've posed her, put her in the scene, it may be that this sort of style and design doesn't fit with the rest of the scene. But now we've got the UVs, we've got a texture to work upon, we can change that easily later on if we need to. The hair again is just pretty much straight lines and again a normal map just to bring out the detail a bit more there. So that's the dress and the hair UV'd. Like I said before, the body we will probably leave as it is and just use a nice shader to, to bring out that skin detail and keep it simple. And the same with the, the eyes, we'll leave those as they are. If I quickly switch to the snail, as you can see here, the body, again, I'm going to leave that and we're going to use it the basic shader um, and try and get a nice feel for the snail body using that. But the shell, we're going to add a texture to that. But all I've done is I've, if I open up the UV page again, very basic projection from the side and then that's unfolded and then mirrored for the other side. Because in the scene, the snail's going to be looked at from this sort of angle. So I'll probably flip those UVs on that side. You're not going to see the seam. And besides, we may just add in on a very basic texture to the snail anyway. But we'll see how that goes as we're, uh, as we're working on it. So that's applying basic textures to our characters just to add a bit more detail and to go with that we're going to use uh, basic shaders to enhance the skin and the snail uh, and the, the eyes etc. The next stage now we've done this is to finally pose Boo um, into the position that we need her in the illustration. Once we've posed her, put the snail in her hand, we can add in the other bits of the scenery which I like I said I'll let you uh, tackle that on your own. It's all basic geometry and you can put in as much or as little detail as you want. Um, and then once we've posed her, it's then down to rendering. 